Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. All right, you guys. So you guys know what that means. It is time for part six of this Takashi Six Nine drama, aka telenovela. Okay, because the shit that's going down with this case is getting crazier and crazier. At this point, I want to write the script and buy the damn rights to the movie. Okay, so what's going down in part six is this. I want to go ahead and shout out D. He put me up on some tea concerning Jorge Rivera, the driver. And what's going on is that basically Sarah Molina, who is Takashi 69's baby's mother, she blasted him almost a year ago back on October 2018, where she was exposing Jorge for basically impregnating his own teenage cousin, okay? Jorge was married. He was like a father figure to her and to Takashi. They became very, very close to him. Um, even when Takashi was on the Angie Martinez show, he talked very, very highly about Jorge Rivera. Y'all go ahead and check this out really quick. Yeah. No, those, that's literally my everyday team. Like, you see this Mexican guy right here? Yeah. He's literally, like, <laughs> he's literally my everyday guy. And when you look at him, <laughs> you're like, that's not Takashi's entourage. <laughs> that's not Takashi's that people. That is totally his entourage. And he's the guy that feeds me, literally wakes me up, is like, yo, here's your food, here's this. Where are we going Wait, today? Where did you find him? T somewhere. <laughs> like, literally. You know Treyway? Yes. Treyway found him. That's amazing. Treyway found him. And you must like him. And I love him. Okay. He literally is like another father to my daughter. Oh. It's just like, teaches me the right and wrong. It's like, he's just everything. Like, he's everything. Like So, he's, did he make you come he here today? Like, he literally woke me up and was just like, yo, come on, you got an interview. It starts at 12. It's 11.30. My shit is not too true. Yeah, okay. Like the last couple of weeks has been very rough for me. But I know I'm gonna be fine, but thank you guys, thank you. Yo te tiro ahorita para la boom. Looks like I get fired to be working with Danny, so for six nights, so I don't know. I'm still waiting for him to contact me or something. But, you know, I want to say thank you to everybody. You know, you guys show me a lot of support. So, thank you. <laughs> Papito! Thank you, thank you. Thank you for the prayers. Thank you for the donation. I, I hear, like, uh, somebody open, like, a uh, uh, phone, like, like, a, like a phone account or something. I don't know how you call that. All right, so you guys just saw that clip of Takashi 69 praising Jorge. And then did y'all see that fool at the very end of the video throw up the blood set and then say Treyway? It's like these people have no damn shame. He's out and about. He's a cooperating witness. You know what I'm saying? He done impregnated his damn cousin. And he's still out here damn gang banging. Supposedly, Shadi's the one who introduced Danny and Jorge. We later find out that Jorge was really an FBI informant because he had gotten popped for impregnating his cousin and forcing her to have an abortion. So this entire situation is just, when I tell you this is a damn telenovela, Honey, this situation is crazy. I want you guys to go ahead and watch this video of Sarah Molina a year ago blasting Jorge once she found out about, you know, the things he was involved in and the fact that his name was also in that docket for being a snitch. Y'all go ahead and check this out. There's been times where I spoke with his wife and I'm like, oh, and he goes, you know, Jorge loves you. I've been with him and he's asked me about makeup palettes like to buy you. And stuff, and he said you wanted this one. She goes, I didn't, I didn't want that one. I never even said I wanted that. He was buying it for someone else, probably. Every girl he's spoken to is fucking young, and we didn't find out the way after <coughs> I locked up, cause his family called the cops on him for fucking his cousin. 
getting her pregnant in October, and she had an abortion. You know, Jorge and his family called the cops on him, and that's when he was locked up. He was supposed to have been, been deported, especially with immigration laws. Immigration laws now. <clears throat> but they're not stupid. Fucking, I asked him, I'm like, Jorge, you know, it's like really surprising me that you're here. I've had my aunt, husband got deported and he goes he goes oh no I took money from my son's I took $30,000 from my son's saving savings account for a good lawyer I'm like good lawyer and all like you supposed to been deported out of I guess it's a miracle you're out he worked out because he's not supposed to be here He's never had, he's never had motive. Like, I've never understood, I've never understood his motive for recording things, videos, like, going to blogs. He's become obsessed with Danny, and not only Danny, I think somewhat mean and it's just frustrating because this is someone that we really cared about honey all right so you guys just heard what sarah had to say so obviously she was very hurt because like i said they treated this man like a father figure that was like his role he was like a father figure to six nine and sarah to their daughter you know he knew their most intimate you know everything that was going on in their relationship the things that was going on with treyway and then to find out that the whole time he's been informing the police of everything you know was just really a shock and a betrayal but there's more shock and betrayal to come, okay? So now, also yesterday, there was audio that leaked of Shadi and Mel Murder having a conversation. And remember yesterday when I read you guys the transcript where there was also audio, but the audio is really shitty. I tried to fix Shadi's part of it because it was so low, but it was really hard to fix. I'm going to go ahead and play you guys this audio of Mel Murder and Shadi having a conversation about once again trying to violate Takashi 69 Y'all go ahead and check this out. Yo, bro. Hello? Yo. Yo, what's up, bro? Yo, bro. What's up, bro? I ain't shit fucking more. Trying to get some peace in my fucking phone. I need for my car. You trying to do what? I'm trying to get this peace in my car. Um, for the music. Yo. This, yo, uh, I seen this, man. I seen that interview this morning. Your man is crazy, man. <laughs> I know nigga is wild crazy, blood. <laughs> woke up this morning, blood. I'll be sleeping. I woke up, I seen that shit, blood. I said, oh man, son. I said, why is why is this kid doing this, man? <laughs> why is this kid like who's who's in this kid in scrap? Like who's like <laughs> they get talking? Oh, fuck ain't fucking nobody. nobody. Yeah, like right now. Bro, the nigga gotta be on drugs. One of the niggas said, fuck Trey. He said, fuck Trey. Bum ass niggas, dirty ass niggas. He said, what? 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 Like, ain't no tray weight. Like, ain't no more tray weight. Nigga, like, I made that shit. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Like, what you said, man? Um, I said, I, I said, I got to call this nigga. Hey, man, I, I, I need some type of, like, uh, this, uh, this kid is crazy, honey. <laughs> like, shit, you all the way lost it, honey. All the way. Yeah. Like, you take it away from the ball scrap. But the kid lose me, homie. Yeah, he, he gonna give us, he gonna give us something. He being real good, respectful, homie, like, the class. He busy, shit. My nigga, niggas done. My nigga, he done took their soul out and put it on a, on a hanger and hung it up in the closet, you know what I'm saying? What are you talking about? You fuck, fuck me, this boy. That's how you feel? Like, you don't really feel like you can pull up on niggas and have a conversation? You gonna go to social media with it? 
Yeah, he gonna hit him. He gonna hit him. I'm telling you, bro. I feel, I feel kind of depressed right now. I feel, I feel like so. What a little, what a, what a, what a little like, homie. Wait, homie. I, I let the God give the God take away. Well, son, nobody can't take none of it. That's all. That's what you got to keep. Yo, bro. He is a fucking rapper. Who the fuck can take the trade away? Shit, but a nigga assassinate on the branch, right? Who the fuck can't? Yo, bro. He can assassinate all he want. I ain't say nothing. Yeah, bro. Like, I'm looking at all the say-so, Scrap. Some of the niggas, like, Powell, what's on, wait to see everything he got to say, see how let that shit go, and then that's it. You see what I'm saying? You see what? what he got to say, and then I'm going to start firing on everything, like... I got all, I got all the way to Like, come on, man. Yeah, man, well, well, make sure, make sure you call me for the activities in Facebook. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's Monday. We're going to, on, on Monday, too, we already got, a, you know, they got some shit set up for me. So Monday, they want to film. I'm at everybody, me, 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 homies, everybody on camera, we in the room, smoking, regular shit. <laughs> like, hey. you, know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm coming. I'm going to be there for that. I, 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 I feel, I feel, I feel obliged for this man. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who this kid that he's talking to. He didn't create Trey, but we created you. He was a mutt. We bounced you on his head. And we put, we, put, we put a muzzle on you. And, and we said you ought to be a dog, nigga. He was a mutt. You don't know nothing about his life that you, that you put perpetrated. But, you know, come on, Scott. We gave you, we, we, we made you who you were so you could, so you could help us in our situation, nigga. <laughs> swap, swap it out. Don't try to act like it wasn't an evil exchange. We gave you life. And you gave and you introduced us to the bag more than what we was. Nigga, that's it, nigga. But you ain't make trade any scrap. We made you. You wanna be shit without trade. Matter of fact, straight up. You, you better be able to handle all that, that drama you gonna cause too. But we good out here in these streets, nigga. What about you? Right. You, nigga, like you talking to me, dry snitching, you talking about I knew my team was strong. I knew my team was strong. So what I'm trying to say is I, that's why I was acting the way I was acting. That's why I was talking all the shit I was talking, because I knew my team was strong. He like, but you know, at the end of the day, I knew when I got back, it had to be niggas around me because my team was too strong for niggas to be outside of like basically like he dry snitching, bro. Right. I'm like, yo, shut this nigga. How we locked up? And what you say on camera? Right. You know he going. Yeah, he's trying to dry snitch, bro. <clears throat> you know, you know he going. You know he's trying to do it. Niggas threatening his family, telling people where he live at. Like, if he don't want to do the shows, but the promoters is telling him where he live at to try to get people to do something to his moms, homie. <laughs> he said all that? Nah, that's the old old team beast, right? I said, this kid was crazy, son. And then, remember, the man who was 212 and he just told me the other day, like, yes, about the paper, about refraining from 12 with the boy. So I'm like, oh, boy playing, like, this is what he trying to do. Boy playing dope, mm -hmm. man. He trying to dry snitch at the same time, homie. But he keeps saying, fuck Trey Wee. Fuck that nigga Trey Wee. Fuck Trey Wee. Ain't no Trey Wee. Fuck Trey Wee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to feed him, though. They got the fucking shit right there. Yo, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm gonna come get you car. As soon as I leave here, I'm coming straight down Brooklyn and come get you. Alright. Cause it'll be dressed or something, you know what I mean? That's what I did, touch it. All right, so you guys just heard that conversation with Mel Murder and Shoddy. And, you know, Shoddy was doing a lot of laughing. To me, he kind of sounded uncomfortable. Like, he kind of felt, you know, there might have been a setup or the phone might have been tapped, which it was. It was wiretapped by the feds. And so, it's just really crazy that... Once again, Mel Murder is in the mix of everything, okay? And what his obsession is with TMZ, I don't know. It's like, the, to hear these grown men constantly talking about going on TMZ and, you know, setting up, you know, interviews. It's like, dude, you're supposed to be a gangster. Like, gangsters are supposed to move in silence, okay? Silence and violence. And these guys are literally talking about going on TMZ. You know what I'm saying? Where everybody watches TMZ TMZ at this point is the damn feds, okay? So I just found that really crazy that he's so excited about wanting to go on TMZ. But as we all know, he doesn't end up going on TMZ because Jim Jones shut that shit down, okay? So now there's another guy involved, and he's also an informant. So as this case is becoming more and more clear, it's very obvious that Takashi was not the only one snitching and singing like a damn canary, bitch.
Okay, so on top of Takashi 69, you know, singing like a canary, we also have this other guy, and his name is Christian Cruz. And basically, he's been arrested and he's telling it all, honey. He's basically talking about how he hired NYPD sergeants to act as heroin carriers for the nine Trey Bloods. So, this situation is just getting crazier and crazier. Like, this is honestly like a real life episode of Power. Like, you couldn't have told me that the case was going to, you know, get to this point where NYPD sergeants are now being called out by informants on the witness stand, okay? I'm going to go ahead and read to you guys this article. So it says right here, an NYPD sergeant accused of distributing heroin for a five-star general in the Nine Trade Bloods, the gangster testified Tuesday. Christian Cruz, a nine trade drug dealer cooperating with the government, confirmed on the stand that he hired a sergeant to transport drugs because he believed she would draw less attention from authorities. The sergeant was a girlfriend or a friend of yours? She's an NYPD sergeant, I believe, acts attorney Elin Schumann, who was representing accused nine trade gangster Al Jeremiah Nuke Mack. Cruz responds by saying yes. Then they go on to say, outside the courtroom, another attorney on Mac's legal team, Lou Faluso, confirmed that Arlicia Robinson was the sergeant. Cruz is a key witness against Mac, who's accused of dealing drugs for the gang. He's on trial alongside, alongside nine train members, Anthony Harve Ellison, who is charged with kidnapping rapper 6ix9ine. Robinson was indicted on November 19th, the same day the rapper and other alleged blood members were arrested in the gang takedown. The NYPD did not publicize her arrest, and she has not appeared in court since December. At the time of the bus, Robinson was assigned to a housing bureau that covered 22 projects in Bed-Stuyvesant, Williamsburg, and downtown Brooklyn. The famed Bushwick-born rapper testified he filmed Gummo at the Nine Trade Clubhouse in bed -Stuy. Robinson has res Robinson has since resigned from the NYPD and is out on a hundred thousand dollars bond for a charge of possession of heroin with intent to distribute. Cruz also testified that he joined Nine Trey in 2005 and rose to five star general and was tight with the gang's godfather, Jamel Mel Murder Jones. Cruz, whose nickname is Young Brooklyn, CEO and Dope Boy, said he came from a well-off family that, and that he earned between one hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand selling ecstasy. He estimated he earned between two million and three million selling heroin and fentanyl. The gangster is the third cooperator to take the stand in this trial, along with Takashi and Takashi's driver Jorge Rivera. So that is what the article is saying. So, like I said, this situation is getting crazier by the day. But now, if that's not crazy enough. Audio has now leaked of that same guy, uh, Christian Cruz, him and Mel Murder having a conversation. And in this conversation, he's dissing Shoddy. They're calling Shoddy a roach. This entire situation is crazy. You can tell where the animosity and the jealousy is coming in at. So I want you guys to go ahead and listen to this audio, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. I'm not saying, only nigga I like that you had when you dropped. It's Hall. That's it. That's the only nigga I like. Hall. Um, yeah, a couple of niggas outside here. Hall, but Shoddy's just a roach. Shoddy and Cracks, they belong together, you know? Cracks, no. Uh, cracks don't fool with Shoddy. Yeah, and crack, but Cracks won't steal from you, though. You know that? That's the thing. Fool with Shoddy. Cracks will not fuck with Shoddy and his roach shit. <laughs> Exactly right, but Hall, Hall don't do nothing. Hall won't steal. Huh? I said Hall don't steal from nobody. Nah, Hall ain't no fucking thief. Hall would take it before he steal it. <laughs> I'm about to say, he's 7'6'9". <laughs> Hall would take that shit before he steal it, bro. Well, but I thought, I thought, but he wasn't even taking it from 6'9". He was just taking it. I mean, he's stealing from 6'9". He was taking it. Yeah, he was, he, yeah, he was taking it, but... Yeah, it was, it was like, he was like, he was sneak thief in the middle of the night. That's the stupid thing. This should have just fucked the hall and left Shadi alone. Shadi can't do nothing for him, bro. 6'9", come on. She's not sitting just listening to play his role. She's not sitting just came with me and he would be like, man. She just came with me and let me do the call. I shouldn't have let, I shouldn't have listened to her with him. I shouldn't have let her, but see, that, that came from my own. That came from me not knowing how to accept weird niggas, bro. 
Niggas, <laughs> accept him. If I just would have accepted that little nigga from the door, because he looked so weird and gay, bro. Like, I couldn't do it, bro. I couldn't bring my... <laughs> I can't bring my body. The y'all niggas just fuck with me now. Nah, Motherfuck that nigga out here. Like, I'm like, man, nah, I can't fuck with this nigga blood. Couldn't really embrace the nigga properly. He seen I wasn't really fuck with him like that. He like, this nigga wouldn't really fuck with me. Shotty was making him feel like he was his brother or something. Shotty Chicago, same shit Shotty was doing with me, yeah? Yeah, you the man, yeah, six. Yeah, like, yeah I don't, I never need Shotty to tell me that, yeah? But Shotty, you can't that, bro. I can't tell you, bro, like, if I feel that nigga a buster, bro, then that's what it is. I'm not going to be like, hey, nobody, yeah. you know what? If niggas ask me that, yo, Shotty, your man, I'm like, nah, that was my cab driver one time. Oh, shit. That's it. That was my cab driver. That's how you crazy, man. He was roaching. He was roaching. A nigga, a nigga with his cousins and all that, he used to come down to get to work. He roached his cousins too. Yeah. When he took that book to get to work, he tried to say he was going to go see them, disappeared with it. These motherfuckers, they fucking with him again. They be back around him again because they think he's good. Yeah. So he's going to book him again. That's where he be at, his cousin's studio. Fuck that nigga, I don't know. Yeah, that's what he's doing. His cousin started complaining again, like, yo, man, man, this, I mean, I don't know, man, you already know, shoddy, man, we got going through this, bro, like, don't kill me, <laughs> like, know your cousin, that's your cousin, bro, like, before all, any of us met him, he was your cousin, bro, like, you're not doing this, you know, I act like you, like, we, like, niggas know him better than you, man, it's your cousin, motherfucker. Niggas, the niggas was bringing in some eye right, money, too, a little bit, now and then, when they used to come through, you know? Yeah, his cousin, right? It was, they used to come through, or sometimes when shit was slow, that shit used to help me too, yeah? Nah, they, they, they was tap dancing on live. Nah, they were. They was borrowing like 200, 300 at a time. All right, so you guys just heard that audio. And what's so crazy is that, you know, when Treyway has ever talked about Meryl Murder, he's always spoke about him in a really good light, said they were really good friends and everything else. So once again, this just goes to show you, you know what I'm saying, these guys will turn on each other at the drop of a dime. Now, murder, that's my, that's my, that's my best friend. That's <laughs> my baby boy. That's the other guy. Yeah, you can't say shoddy and don't say matrix. And you can't say matrix and don't say shoddy. It's a problem. Yeah. I, I, that's why I really talk on this shit. That's why. See, I 6 9 talk for shit because he know... So it's not gonna talk shit because I say so. I, I, he got the okay section, and he he one of them niggas that's really with the shits, and vice versa. I talk all the shit because Melly saying shit my shit years and years ago, and I'm really with the shits. So I'm gonna keep doing that shit. That's my big bro. That's my brother. So while Shadi was sitting here talking about we don't ban, we don't fall, we don't do this, we don't do that, these same guys are calling him a roach and having no problem bending and folding on the witness stand. And then I have one more video that I ran across, and this has to do with two elderly gentlemen. Like, these dudes are old enough to be my dad. And they're talking like, you know, this gangbang Brooklyn shit. And, and they're kind of breaking down what the issue is between Mel Murder and Shoddy. So I want you guys to go ahead and listen to what this guy, I think his name is Snowbilly. I don't know who the other guy is talking, but I want you guys to go ahead and check this out, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. Or however they want to play, but Shoddy is a, Shoddy is a goon, man. No, no, no. I, yo, you know what? I told somebody, because niggas was like, yo, Shoddy, hey, Shoddy is a dangerous individual. Very dangerous. But the fact that he's dangerous is the reason... That you gotta put yourself in a position to be like, well, nigga, I'm gonna be ten times more dangerous. Right, right, and they wasn't That's ready the for problem. that. It wasn't cause when, when Shotty come up, to? when Shotty high side of six nine, he was he was like they was saying slick shit. He was pulling up, but Shotty keep the grip and he go blow it. Yeah, let me tell you something. I, I just told the nigga this. I said, yo, to beat niggas like that, you gotta do shit they not willing to do. Yeah, you got. You gotta find out what the niggas is afraid of. And you got to use that to exploit every aspect of it. Yeah. And this way you take them off their A game. When you take a nigga, he's a, he's a dirty opportunist. He see an opportunity running for. Right. So now. That's any, that's any street nigga. Right. So now. So now. Any street nigga. Mm -hmm. Like, like, let me tell you something, Snow. If, if you see an opportunity for a bag, nigga, you running for it. It ain't everybody. I'm going to say one person. Shoddy. Shoddy. 
like Shadi had a plan, right? And when I, when bringing Shadi on board, right? Shadi, see, I can't blame so much on Shadi because it was an imaginary bad there that niggas thought yeah. this nigga had because he bought many of few Rolexes. All that shit was government money, my nigga. Yeah, I know. Oh, you know, all that shit was government money, and at the end of the day, Shadi is under Melly. Yeah. So, Shadi is going to do what Melly say to do. And yeah, that, I, heard, I heard your interview, man, you know what I'm saying? And it's crazy what you said, because somebody else told me that Shadi was trying to get rid of Mel. Yeah, I'm a Capricorn, huh? Somebody else told me that, that, that Shadi was trying to, trying to push Mel out the way. Well... Shadi was gonna push Melly out the way because Melly, I right, this this was me and Shadi conversation upstairs on Maddie, yo big homie. I don't want this to go to be another dip set movement. Every time I need you to be around more often because when you around, Melly keep his mouth shut. When you leave, Melly start talking. So. Melly won his name on paperwork. Shadi was dubbing it. Melly was of course Melly won his name on the paperwork. Like you gotta think, Melly been in this game, so he know when your name on the paperwork, right. that's the check. Right. So now that's the check. So now, but Melly, Melly, Shadi was dubbing it. Now, Melly being under me, I'm like, yo, listen, let's do, let's let's take it this route, and then we can handle everything else. See, Shadi was intimidated. By Shadi was intimidated by um Shadi was intimidated by Melly influence because that's because you know he under Melly, but Melly was under the hip hop police nigga. <laughs> that shit crazy. Every time a nigga say that, that shit crazy. So, but listen, he had the bag. So now, who got the bag is controlling the situation. All right, so you guys just saw that video. So, you know, in conclusion of this part six, in my personal opinion, now that we're up to part six, I'm seeing where all of the fractures are coming in. None of these guys took Takashi 6 9 as anything, you know, as a big deal. They just thought he was just some weirdo rapper with rainbow colored hair. But Shadi actually took a chance on him. And then once 6 9 started blowing up, and getting money then that's where the jealousy starts to come in you can even hear it you know the way that Mel Murder was talking about Shoddy him and the other guy Christian Cruz like they're basically hating on Shoddy for having a vision to basically believe in 6 9 and now that he's reaping the rewards from that they're upset that they passed on 6 9 so from everything that was being said on that wiretap with um, Mel Murder and Christian Cruz, it ties into what these two old men from Brooklyn, and I mean no disrespect, I don't know who they are. I think I said his name was Snow Billy or something like that. So it ties into what these two old men are saying, that basically Shoddy was kind of getting too big for his britches. Because again, remember, Mel Murder is what the newspaper and everybody's dubbing as the godfather of Nine Trey. And then you have Shoddy who's supposed to be under him. But this new generation, including myself, shit, I, I have no idea who these people are. But I know who Shoddy is because we see Shoddy on 6 Nine's hip. Shoddy was able to get that love and hip pop reality tv show he's on there trying to take that dirty money and flip it into a legit business trayway even gonna stay in business i honestly don't know what to think and i'm panicking what's up what's up hey man i'm all right how you living fine i feel like i just kind of been pushed to the side and it's like that's what i want you to be understand. working and i feel like you have a lot of stuff going on and it's like okay I'll get back to Alexis. So now, Shoddy is now being the face of Treyway, as opposed to Mel Murder, who's been putting in work since the damn 90s, I guess, when he was running around with, you know, Jim Jones and shit. So, now do you guys understand where the jealousy and the fraction is coming in at? So, like I said before, 
Um, they were definitely under investigation well before 6 9 came into the picture because these people have been out in the streets doing dirt for years. But 6 9 was that, it, you know, it's almost like one of those crazy coincidences that, that happened by happenstance is that 6 9 is basically the person who was able to get in and basically cause this friction. There was already some friction, but once 6 9 came into the picture and was blowing up and was able to get famous off of the gang and, you know, they're trying to extort him. He's, you know, catching on to it. But Shadi's not extorting him. Shadi's really trying to be next to him because now Shadi's reaping the rewards of being next to 6 9 and, you know, having believed in him and everything else. So it's causing a lot of hate, animosity, and drama. So, honey, when I tell you this ain't nothing but a damn movie script waiting right to happen, and I'm here for it, bitch, okay? This entire story is better than any fiction I've seen on damn TV. And the crazy part is this is real. This is real people, real real lives being affected oh my goodness this is crazy i can't wait to see what happens in part seven okay anyways y'all that's it for part six this video is long enough make sure you guys thumbs up your comment share the video don't forget to subscribe most importantly hit that notification bell so that way when i drop part seven you'll be notified right away let's go ahead and get the discussion popping let me know your thoughts on it everything that went down on this damn episode of as the telenovela turns okay that's what we need to call this the damn dragon ball t slash telenovela series honey because i'm i'm just blown away by all this fuckery go ahead and leave a comment all right deuces <laughs>